Okay, Georges Larac, welcome to the Home Run Hallway. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Uh, so you're here today to talk about uh, Lucy the Elephant. How did you first hear about Lucy? Uh, well, I heard that Peter and Bob Barker tried to get her out of Edmonton to save her life, and they weren't successful. And, and then I've talked to many uh, vet veterinarians and doctors that told me about her condition, how she was dying in Edmonton. And, and I thought since I was in, I'm an Edmontonian and I have a house there and do a lot of charity work down there and I know the mayor, I thought that I could try it in, in my own way to see if I could get people to open up their conscience and their heart to, to try to help me saving her and put her somewhere else in a warm century where we could save her life. Now you have, uh, you're involved in so many different things. Uh, you are a supporter of PETA. Yeah. Uh, you're involved with the Green Party, the leader, yeah. uh, and you are also building a hospital in Haiti. Building a hospital in Haiti. Spoke, yeah. Spoke person for World Vision. Uh, what is it that uh, makes you feel motivated to get involved in so many different causes? Just because I feel so lucky that, uh, fortunately, that I was in the NHL, and I always felt that the reason why God gave me the chance to be there is to do great, greater things outside of hockey. You know, when you're an athlete, you, you get an authority to be able to join different causes to be a real role model in society and do real things, move, get moving and do things that actually matters. Because being a hockey player, it's an entertainment, but it doesn't do anything for people other than being an entertainment. But what sets you apart? Because, I mean, lots of hockey players, lots of professional athletes, they'll get involved, they'll go see uh, sick kids in the hospital, but you've really made it kind of like your, your life purpose. Yeah. I mean, you're definitely not typical in that sense uh, compared to other yeah. people who've played professional yeah. sports. I just, that's what makes me live. I have no idea. I have this passion and to try to help people and be a real role model and maybe inspire other kids that will be athletes one day to, to do more. Because, you know, a lot of people say I do too much, but I say I do it for people that don't do enough. You know, there's many people that don't do anything, and it's so important. I want to show them the power they can have sometimes. They could be the voice of many people. So many people are inactive. Like, for example, just a quick thing. Politics, for example, 41% 41 41 of the population don't vote, and we live in a democratic country. So maybe now that I'm part of politics, even if people don't vote green, if it could encourage people more to vote, and if percentage goes down, we're winners. So that's all I want, try to educate people, get people to vote, educate people about things, the power to vote they can have, and many different other things that I just want to have an impact. As long as I live, I'm going to be like this, living 100 miles an hour, and try to be everywhere, help as many groups as I can, as long as it's good things. I pick and choose what I want. I get hundreds of requests every day through my website, and, and I pick the thing that comes to my heart. I bet you do. Right? Yeah. Is it a full-time job to uh, yeah, sort is, through all the is. tweets and yeah. all the messages that you, you get? Know, all the tweets is fun because I, I walk around with my phone and I tweet all the time. But the hundred emails a day, it's tough because it's, it's always the men. People always asking for stuff. So I try to screen and find things that I actually like, that I think that are great, like charitable stuff or stuff that I think that matters or will have an impact or inspire kids of the future, a better environment and stuff like that. So I just try every day to be a better person. and and be thankful of what I have, the chance that I have, and try to spread the wealth, try to spread what I have and my knowledge and help as many people as I can. I want to ask you about uh, Battle of the Blades. Yeah. Uh, I was watching, I was following you. What was it like? Uh, it was also a, a, a charitable, charitable thing as well because yeah. you were skating for Hockey well, for I Haiti. It, I did it for two things. I did it for, obviously, Hockey for Haiti because it brought Haiti back in the news since it was all well forgotten because in the news we all know that when things out of the news, people get bored, they don't show it anymore when Haiti need, needs a lot of help. But the biggest message is that this could actually inspire kids to get into figure skating when it's the stereotype, breaking stereotype. People think it's not a sport for guys, it's a gay sport or whatever. You know, so kids, when they see me doing it, they could be like, you know what, I could do it now. And actually, figure skating is even harder than hockey, and it's actually, it's an extreme sport. It's way, it's so difficult, and it's so dangerous. And you have, those skaters, they have so much courage and stuff, and I admire them. And it's funny because now, since I did the show, I'm getting tons of requests to do figure skating shows across Canada for their year and show. They have an said yes to all of them. So, to again, to aspire kids to do it, so people will be seeing me doing figure skating uh, and all in Montreal, all over the place in figure skating club with different partners and doing crazy stuff. So then people will like kind of see what I was doing Battle of the Blade, and again, I'm doing it that. It's not for Haiti, but just to inspire people to get into the sport and say that if George does it, I could do it. Nobody can say anything wrong about it. Ah, that's fantastic. Uh, one last quick question. Yeah. Uh, you grew up in Montreal. Yeah. What place in Montreal is like the quintessential Montreal for you? Well, obviously, I'm going to say uh, Rachel and Saint-Germain. I'm going to say that because it's right, it's on the plateau. 
like right close to Montreal where you could walk up the hill and stuff and you could enjoy the green space that is there. And you could go eat at a restaurant. Calls. The <laughs> <laughs> that is not on Rachel before you go down the hill after you come back have a smoothie or whatever. Just it's to give it context, to you're, a, you're an, a part owner? Yeah, part owner. Uh, we have two Crudessons restaurants, which is a raw vegan restaurant in Montreal. So it's, I'm, I'm vegan, and, but 60% raw, not full, 100%. What to order? A Crudessons. Uh, for a first time, you know, I, I would suggest the home burger. Because it's not too granola, and you'll, it'll be easier to convert you if you start with something that most people like. It's the most popular thing we have. Super. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.